Oh gosh, here we are. Are we live? Awesome, awesome. Well, welcome Mark Callahan. This is a kind of an impromptu product announcement live stream. Uh, Mr. Saltwater Tank, thanks for joining us, man. Hey, Terrence, thanks for having me out on uh, short notice. It's cool, I'm, uh, I'm fun with the uh, Monday morning. Hey, let's go do a live stream this afternoon. I'm like, sure, why hey, not, let's uh, make it happen. Don't tell anybody that's that's the way I roll so many times, okay? That's how we get the best stuff out of there. So uh, hopefully all the technology is going out there well to you guys. Uh, you know, we're always trying new stuff, it seems like. But uh, yeah, so anyway, we are here to announce a new product. And you guys all know that we have the, you know, the Sky, right? And the Sky is a new product that's coming out. But that's not what we're going to do today. But before we get there, I do want to announce something around that, which is Mark uh, has been one of the fortunate guys to be already running the sky. Isn't that true, Mark? I can officially say yes. Now, uh, now that you said it first, Terrence, yes, I have the sky on my <laughs> new uh, thousand gallon reef. Yes, that is true. And so uh, we, you got a number of them over that. It's a, uh, how big is the reef again? A thousand? Nine hundred and eighty-seven, I think it is, right? Right, because I've been, I said a thousand when I first announced it, and several people corrected me that that's that not right. It's actually nine hundred eighty-seven gallons. So it's so depends funny on that where you are in the picky spectrum. It's one of those things, it's like when you do your taxes, right? You want to pick a number that sounds believable, right? If you say a thousand gallons, like, sure, you've got a thousand gallon tank. Right, but 987. Who's going to argue with that? I mean, <laughs> really. So sure. anyway, you've, you've been running it for a little while. How many? We've got what six of them over the tank? I think. Six or that, seven. Six or seven. Yeah, you've got that end piece. It's a it's a drop it's a drop off tank, right? How deep is it on the end there? Let's show a picture of that, Vincent. The white. Yeah, the white one. So the the drop off section is four feet deep on. Uh, from top to bottom. <laughs> Vincent's messing up our whole show here, so uh, it's okay. There it is. <laughs> yeah, so there it is. All righty, so uh, this, is, this is how I like a look at a tank. I don't know about you, Mark, but I am, uh, I'm not the, the blue kind of guy. I like kind of see a nice you know, mix of colors, um, be able to see all the different individual colors on my reef. How do you feel about it? I, you know, you say that, and I was actually changing my settings on the sky while we were queuing up for the live stream. So I was like, it's just a little blue. I like some blue, but out on the reefs, I'm like, I don't see this kind of blue. So I get my blue fixed in the morning and in the evening, but during the day, I like it to be white with a tinge of blue. Yeah, I agree. That's exactly where I am with it. I, I think there's a there's a desire to get a little bit more pop out of the, you know, the greens in the tank. But if you go so blue that you get the kind of uh, the neon stuff that we're used to seeing at the, the frag swaps, you end up washing out a lot of the other colors so many times, right? The yellows and the oranges and things like that. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, this look right here is what I like. But one of the things that's interesting, because we have shown a couple of tanks here, and we got a lot of response back that was saying, hey, um, it seems like it's really, really white, right? Well, that may be true, but we've really, we've really curated a spectrum here with the light that gives, I think, the right kind of uh, range, so to speak. So if you like a more blue tank, you can have a little bit more blue tank. If you like the tank looking like it does when you're diving, you can do that. I think Vincent's got another picture here that he'll show it to you. Um, this is what a lot of people like, right? I'm not, it's not for me, but I understand it. If you notice, Mark doesn't have a ton of really bright green corals in this tank yet because he's just kind of kicking it off, but you see that one right in the middle? What is that, Mark? Uh, that's a toadstool leather. Uh, that was a fun one because it's solid green. It's not like the most green toadstools. It's got some tan in it, so it's, it's green all the way through, and when it gets hit with the nuclear blues, it's ka -ching! You can't miss it. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, th I just wanted to show with this picture that you can, if you want to get, you know, that much more blue look, or you want to basically be, you know, picking, um, you know, while well, you have somebody there watching your tank go, oh, yeah, well, check out this or check out that. You can get to that, that really blue area. But anyway, um, so you're enjoying them so far. You can't say too much at this point because I've kind of kept you from saying much. But overall, are you enjoying it? Yes, yes, it's... Um it's a very nice light, you know, very um, 
flat light. I guess I can say that. Nine hill slap me again after the live stream. So. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's um, you know, it's something that um, just to kind of let a little cat out of the bag about my setups is usually I put a, a LED light with a T5 next to it because I like the flatness on a T5, but I'm not going to do that with the sky because I don't think I need it. Right, right, yeah. So that is one of the things that we, you know, um, we are finding. We do have a number of them out in the NSI right now. Is that the need to put the other strips on your tank just really isn't there. The coverage is so good, and the the gamut of light is uh, is is so broad that you don't really you don't really need to do that like you did before. But um, we'll definitely be hearing more about this. This isn't a this isn't a sky uh, announcement, so uh, so we'll leave it at that. But you know, I, I have been following along with what you're doing, and uh, in relation to what we're announcing today, um, you uh, what do you what are your thoughts on nutrient export? What is your kind of go-to thing on this tank as as one of the the key ways? So, you know, one fun thing that was. You and I have been a hobby a long time, Terrence. Back when we kind of started, it was all about refugiums. Then refugiums kind of fell out, and now yeah. refugiums are back again. Yep. Um, I like refugiums. They're pretty cool. I mean, you get all kinds of critters growing in there that you don't really get in your display. Mm -hmm. But unless you have a sizable one, you're not going to get much horsepower out of it. Now, right. It doesn't mean if you have a sump with an in sump refugium, don't do one. I'm just, I like to keep it in perspective for people. It's and a proportion thing, right? It's a proportion, right? right? If yep. you have a tank like, like I have, or like you have, yours is you know, over twice as big as mine. You have to have a proportionally sized amount of refugium to to handle it. Um, you know, for sure, that's uh, that's sometimes a problem for some of the people. I would say in the mid-sized tanks, I think it's a problem anyway in the mid-sized tanks, just the overall sump size, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and that's you know, it's something you just have to deal with. If your sump's underneath your tank, you only have so much room. Right. And some of us are spoiled and we have a fish room like you and I, and we added onto the house so I could have a different and bigger fish room. And part of that was getting to have a sizable refugium. Well, let's um, see that. So I have a, yeah, you guys have a photo of that. I'll yeah, we do. Um, yeah, Vincent's going to throw it up here. So I had plenty of room to work with the refugium. And in my case, I wanted it to go over the frag tank because I only had so much vert horizontal space. So I actually hung the refugium off the ceiling. Right. Um, and there it is. Off the ceiling partially, yep, mounted to the wall. So that refugium is 69 inches long. It's uh, 20 inches front to back and 18 inches tall. So, you know, right. I don't know the gallons, but really with refugiums, you know, it's all surface area. So I've got a lot of surface area on that one. Right. Um, when it's time to put macro in there, don't have any in there yet because it's the tank is new. But I know I will in time, and when it needs it, you know I can really crank up the grows and get lots of horsepower in terms of nutrient export. It's so cool. Day. MRC put that together. You know, Raj does some amazing stuff over there at MRC. And when I saw you were going to hang that from the ceiling, I was like, whoa, that's really going for it. <laughs> It's, uh, I've done it a couple times. I liked it. You know, when I built this fish tank, I got to take all the stuff from client builds that I liked that I wanted on mine. And I did that and I actually have to go do hang two of them in a couple of weeks for two 1000 gallon race hung off the ceiling, actually the roof, which is about 15 feet above uh, where the refugium right. is going to be. So wow. You do it once, all of a sudden you get asked for it more. So it, it's a lot of fun to do it. Well, since this is the kind of the theme of this uh, announcement, I'm going to tell Vincent to go ahead and just roll the three-minute uh, kind of uh, announcement video or the product video. We'll sit back and watch it, and then we're going to come back and chat about it, okay? Go ahead and roll, Vincent. Sounds great. Roll. It's widely accepted that nutrient control and stability are key factors for a thriving and successful reef aquarium. To accomplish this, many experts suggest a refugium for growing and harvesting macroalgae. Hi, Terrence here from Neptune Systems introducing the GROW, a purpose-built LED light fixture for effectively growing macroalgae in a marine aquarium refugium. The GROW is a flat light source consisting of 84 low-power LED that create an evenly distributed blanket of light in the key spectrum bands optimized for growing the most popular macroalgae, like Catamorpha. So up until now, the common approach for lighting a refugium was to use high-powered lights that sometimes blast the entire sump area with light. It wastes power, spills light, and creates nuisance algae. Also, oftentimes these lights have a strong single point source which unevenly distributes the light. 
creating hot spots that burn or stunt the growth of macroalgae. Yeah, there can be too much of a good thing. But with a gross flat, even lighting, it allows it to be mounted very close to the water level, minimizing wasted light spillage and effectively using all 20 watts of its power to grow algae in an area up to 18 by 24 inches. Oh, and don't worry about placing the grow close to the water surface. It's IP64 rated for water resistance, so salt spray will not affect it. The grow comes in two convenient mounting options that both use a flexible, gooseneck style arm. One is a conventional clamp mount intended for any flat surface on or around your sump or refugium. The other is an innovative pipe mount that affixes the mounting arm to some part of the existing hard plumbing under the aquarium, up and out of the way. Connecting the grow is easy. For Apex owners, just connect its plug into a free DC24 port on your Energy Bar 832 or One Link module. If you don't yet have an Apex, don't worry. Simply purchase the optionally available power supply. No Apex necessary. Since most will want an RDP, or Reverse Daylight Photosynthesis Schedule, for their grow, we've made setting that up super easy with a brand new task in Apex Fusion. Just select Tasks, Grow, and with a few clicks, you're all set up. It's that easy. For those that might doubt a lower-powered LED can effectively work, don't just take our word. The proof is in the words of our Neptune Systems insiders, who have for many months put the grow through its paces. We've made their testing journey and feedback public on our community forum at this address. So, whether you're just starting out with a refugium or maybe you just aren't quite satisfied with your existing light, we hope that we've given you enough information to consider the grow and give it a try. Well, there you go, Mark. There is the next accessory for your Apex. Or if you don't have an Apex, you just want a refugium light. What do you think? I think that's it's great i mean it's i like that it's panel lights and panel lights where everything is going and the thing about putting in a refugium light is even better especially with the spill you know addressing the spill thing there's all i've seen all kinds of interesting ways that people have handled that in some videos reviews that i've done of tanks with 3d printed stuff and even cardboard and yeah it's very interesting that you should bring that up that's a really good point so one of the things uh uh, that uh, is super, first of all, I ran this for a year, okay, before, uh, you know, we even uh, decided to make it a product. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not something that started out completely unique, right? This is another company who's worked with us to, to modify something that they already had to make it one of our products, right? We, not every product we have, a big surprise, right, originated here completely in the building. But what we do is try to find a way to make products better, to make them more suited for our customers, to make them Apex integrated, all of the things uh, that are there. So it's not, a, it's not identical to a prior product that used to be on the market. Um, but what's really, really cool about it is the, 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 the fact that you put the light right where you want it. So um, you talked about the shading. There was all these 3D printed things. You spend electricity and you spend the money to get an 80 or 90 watt light. And then you basically cut off, you know, 50, 60, 70% of the light just to keep it, you know, where you want it to be. And, uh, and you know, it's like, what's, what's the point of doing that? Um, we're already asking, obviously, what the price is. What's the price? What's the price? What's the price? Um, the price is $129.95. And with that, what's really cool is you do get the mount. And you can pick one of two mounting options. Here is the pipe mount, by the way. So you basically can just, if I could do this on camera, it would be great, but probably won't be able to. There we go. There we go. Oh, I just took the rubber out of it. See? Oh, <laughs> because I was doing it the wrong way. But anyway, you basically clamp this on, and then from above, you can make it come down like this, or you can have it from the back and go around like that. And it's a really neat, innovative mount. This is stainless steel. Stainless still can have, you know, some surface rust on it. We know that. It's not titanium. Sorry. Um, that, <laughs> we're not going to make a titanium bracket for you. Uh, but it is really cool. We also have some... two ninety nine. dollars Yeah, exactly. We do have the, uh, you know, the flat version of this. Uh, and uh, this will mount, you know, to any kind of surface like you see I have over here on this. It, it's just really handy. And if you need to have more coverage... You can get two of them, right? If you have a bigger refugium like Mark does, he might use two, he might use three. I don't know, is that whole thing gonna be a, you know, refugium, yep. the entire thing? Yep. Yeah, so you might yep. use three. I'm probably gonna start with two. Yep, start with yeah, two, for sure. Maybe need three. And so it does have a connection that goes right to the DC24, right? And um, 
you know, one of the things too that I, you know, I've heard people, well, Kim, should there have been a bigger one, right? Um, let's look at it not in a Mark Callahan setup, but in a most people's setup, which is on a Red Sea. Vincent's going to pull up here a Red Sea, and you'll see it actually uh, front view, I think, of the sump, Vincent, with it on a Red Sea. He's trying to set it up for me right now. There we go. Make that one go live. There you go. So there it is over a Red Sea, and you can see that that's the, it's the perfect shape, the perfect size, uh, and it allows you to get it right down near the water uh, and don't even really have to worry about getting it a little bit wet. So that's why the size is what it is. So, yeah, show the next one, Vincent, the next progression on this one. He's going to throw that one up there in a second. Make it go live, buddy. <laughs> He's trying over there. I mean, that's, Terrence, this really just, it's, you're talking about making it bigger. I mean, most people, like you said, don't have my sump. This is more of typical. That's, yeah. You made it much bigger. Like, there's no way to get in there to harvest any algae. You'd have to take the light out. Well, and the thing about it, too, is that if you have to have it up high because it's too big to fit down near the water like that, then you have all the stray light that we just talked about. So, you know, there's definitely right. the trade-offs that you have all the way around. Um, you were mentioning earlier about, um, you, know, ha you know, having the right size refugium and whatnot. We've actually found in um, a water box here, Kurt, the founder of the company, was running one of these for, I don't know, about three months in the beginning. And he actually had his, his uh, nutrients just go right to zero and had big problems because, believe it or not, even in that water box, the front you know, compartment is only you know, about yay big. And he grew algae all the way down through that thing. And it, and it just, he kept harvesting it and harvesting it and basically dropped all of his nutrients all the way down. And you'll see some of that in the, in, in the NSI stuff that we have out there. Um, mentioned about the, you, you asked me for some pictures this morning to show the uh, water resistance. We did have an NSI member um, that uh, uh, had one. You can see on this guy's, right? You can see all the salt creep up on that thing. <laughs> this is a creep. normal operation, right? I, I mean, I don't know about yeah. you, what your stuff looks like, but my stuff always looks like this. And if you have a very expensive refugium light down in there with a fan and a lot of electronics, <laughs> it's probably not going to last it's super long. Well. Um, but this is one of our NSI guys, and it still worked. Um, the next shot, I think, shows it you know, uh, on, and he was yep, showing that, right yeah, here. I got a lot of salt creep on there, and it still worked. Uh, and so we think it's reasonably priced. It's $129.95, uh, and it's going to grow algae like crazy for, you know, for people. Uh, what I want to do now, though, is I actually want to talk to one of the first people, or sorry, the first group of people, somebody from the first group of people who tested out for now six months, uh, the grow before it's come to market. And uh, so let's bring up Matt Leonard, who's one of our NSI guys, and let's talk to him, Mark. There's Matt. Matt. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Matt, where are you from, man? Uh, Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida. All right. So Matt, uh, is, is this the first NSI that you've been, been on, Matt? Uh, I did one shortly before this one, but this was like the first kind of big project. Okay. So Matt, we, we chose Matt to come on here because Matt had one of the, the best kind of journeys and you can go read his journey out there on the forum. I think his, uh, his thread is mall something or other is your, yeah, mall 7887. There you go. Uh, and so it's out there. You can actually read what he had, uh, what his experience was. So, uh, Matt, tell us, tell us your experience with refugiums you know, before the sky and, uh, and what you did, if anything, and how your journey went. Just give us the synopsis in the very beginning. Uh, so, obviously, like I a lot the of the sky, I meant to grow. <laughs> 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 the uh, sky on the rain. <laughs> so, yeah, I've uh, been in the hobby for over 10 years. Uh, had a lot of different solutions, a lot of different setups over the year. It's kind of, you go through that evolution where you're starting with, like, the little reflector and, like, the CFL light bulb aimed down. Um, right. And then you kind of evolve. Um, so prior to the uh, grow, I had a, a, a AI fuge light, uh -huh. and uh, one of the biggest problems I think I shared was that I had the you know, light spillage just all over because I had to mount it so high to be able to uh, light my refugium. So mm -hmm. the grow, um, you know, the pipe clamp um, allowed a unique mounting, uh, allowed me to mount it very close to the surface, and I've just 
out of any of the lights I've had through my reefing journey, by far has produced the best results. So you grow Catamorpha, right? We showed that somebody else that was on the NSI's tank. I'm sorry if you're out there uh, who that was that had some, uh, I think it was Ulva and, uh, and some other red macro in there. But you grow mostly the Cato, right? Uh, Cato, I think it's the, the red dragon. And then uh, I've- Oh, you had a, multiple the, types as well. Yeah, the Ulva I've tried to remove for a long time, but it keeps growing back. But it, it grows all of them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the Ulva's nice because Mark, don't the uh, don't the tangs eat the Ulva? Uh, some do, some don't. Mine are picky. They only like purple algae, but I've certainly seen tangs attack it. Yes. I can tell you that they, if if you can find some of that purple grape stuff, that's the stuff I found that they just go nuts for. That I that I'd grown way back in the day, like in two thousand nine or something. So uh, so you've had the grow on your refugium about six months, right? And yes, uh, did you notice a reduction in, in nutrients over time? Did it help out in that regard? Did you feed more? Absolutely, yeah. So definitely um, noticed a reduction. Um, and I was able, actually, I like to feed heavy. I always have. So it's one of the main reasons I run Refugium, just so I, I don't have to curb the feeding. Um, so definitely this has helped me manage that. Um, so I kind of see a reduction and then kind of fatten them up a little bit more, throw a little bit more food in there. And it, it's definitely helped control that. That's great. It's 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 nice to be able to have that option. I mean, Mark, you know that you know, fat, uh, well-fed fish are healthy fish, right? Um, from all the diseases yep, and stuff. My most, my most successful clients in terms of fish always feed more than I would ever believe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, I, how many? I mean, how much were you harvesting? Give people an idea of of what that would be. Not to me or Mark. That's to oh, you. Me. So, uh, so yeah, so once a week, um, I'm regularly harvesting. Um, if you look at my thread that's on, that's public now, um, you know, I'm, I'm harvesting regularly once a week. And then the two week updates, you know, I, I shared pictures of what I was harvesting, but uh, I was easily able to fill um, a grocery bag at least. Um, oh, uh, let's see of, some of those pictures, Vincent. So let's see his setup. Why don't you throw his setup out there and let's take a look at that and then we'll see s s some of what he did. So here's your, uh, here's your sump setup. Look at this, a man after my own heart. He's got the, the, the gray and orange there. He's got uh, the, the nice plumbing. Everything looks super clean. Um, nice. And uh, there's the, the grow, nice down and low, right? And you can see a little bit of the Cato down in that compartment, right? Um, use the pipe mount. Yeah, I used the pipe clamp. Um, so I used that on my uh, UV line. So I have a PVC line that kind of runs across the top of the sump. So I was able to clamp it right on that and get it nice and close. So for people to know, you can use it on, uh, you might have a different one because we did change a little bit uh, the size, Matt. So the, the shipping one works on one inch pipe or uh, three quarter inch fittings. So if you have three quarter inch plumbing, it'll fit on the, one of the fittings. If you have one inch pipe, it fits right on the, pi on the, on the pipe itself. So that's it's the uh, first time I've seen that. And that was by far, you know, one of the best designs that I've seen. It really gives you a lot of options. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I, obviously the script says up and out of the way. It's actually, that's absolutely the case, right? It's just, it's so nice because you have all this stuff, a lot of times cruising all around your tank and be able to mount something to it. And then when you want to get in there to get your algae, you just bend it over like that, get your algae out and then bend it right back down. Uh, it's Precisely. super handy. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, there we go. There's a, a good look at uh, how much algae. That's, a, what, a couple of weeks worth or what? That's like a week and a half two weeks wow. every time. <laughs> that's crazy, man. I mean, you know that's more literally couple, where I, you know, I can't even get to that. <laughs> do, you do, do, you, do you dose anything else into, uh, into your tank for your Kato, like any of the additives that have iron and stuff? Nope. Just uh, do I have automatic water change with the dose and just heavily feeding. I mean, that's, that's plenty of nutrients. Well, that's great, man. That's great. Well, you know, I just want to thank you, you know, for being part of the NSI project. And you're definitely one of the, you know, the better, more active members. For those of you out there who, uh, uh, you know, who want to be part of an NSI group, right? Or if you already are, uh, you know, part of one, the best way to stay in the NSI group is to participate and to give the feedback. And Matt, I mean, you did a great job at that as far as just coming back in every once in a while, telling us how it's going, showing pictures and whatnot. And uh, all of us here at Neptune Systems just want to say thank you for doing that. And uh, yeah, I mean, there you go. I all right, be a part of it. No doubt, everybody would be uh, very happy with it. I mean, it's, it's definitely the best light I've seen.
Oh my gosh, look at that. Love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't paid to say that. <laughs> so, uh, no, hey, you know, I, I, it's not like I, it, it works. So, okay, so uh, let's take a few questions here. I don't know uh, how many questions we got out there on, on there. First of all, we'll go back over for those of you that joined us late. We have a uh, brand new product. It's called The Grow. It's a light for growing macroalgae uh, in your refugium uh, for nutrient reduction, nutrient export. Uh, it uh, is about 20 watts. It plugs right into your Energy Bar 832, or you can get a power supply that you can run it, uh, you know, standalone completely if you want to. Comes with two mounts uh, options, not two in one, but comes either with a uh, a uh, pipe clamp mount, or you can get the one with the standard flat mount. Uh, and uh, it's 129.95. You can go pre-order at some of the stores right now. Go talk to your local fish store. They'll be coming in over the next couple of weeks. Uh, into all of those areas. So uh, let's see if we have any questions. Oh. I mean, Terrence, before you jump, by you queuing up your question, I mean, the yes. fact that it plugs into the BC24 is, you told me that when we were looking at this thing and it's like, that's great. Anytime I can ditch a power brick and free Very up an, an, an outlet on my energy bar, it's like, I'm like, great, fantastic, I'm in. I like it even better. I, so I'm thrilled that it's, it's a, you can plug it into a DC24 and if you don't, even if you're not an Apex user, which you probably should be, um, <laughs> then you, you're not out in the dark. Yeah, the, um, and, and the, it does have a, a task in our task menu for setting it up. Uh, as it said in the video, RDP, which is reverse daylight photosynthesis, which means you have it on opposite of your tank. Um, and then you obviously can adjust the number of hours that you want. So if you, if you need more nutrient reduction, you can have it on longer. Uh, and if you, you know, if you start to get uh, pushed down too much on those nutrients, you can obviously have it uh, on there for less time. Um, let's see, physical dimensions of the light. I should know those by heart, but I can tell you by looking at it, it's about seven inches by about nine and a half inches, I'd say, mm, looking at it. There you go. Does that get you any kind of idea? Um, can we hang, uh, hang it without the gooseneck? Absolutely, it has, you know, you obviously have a hole right here. You can use a uh, hanging kit. I think Mark is using one uh, over uh, his tank, just a regular uh, one of those cable hanging kit type uh, things. Right, Mark? Yes. It's standard? Yep, you just need a big a fender washer, a big fender washer, and you're good to go. Right. Uh, Jason asks, is it IP64 or IP68? It's IP64, which is basically splash resistant. This isn't meant to go for a drink. Um, it, it's meant to get splashed with water and not have water intrusion. Um, you know, as you get up on those numbers, you can have, uh, you know, a blast of water it needs to take uh, or underwater for a certain amount of time. But uh, it's enough that, you know, we have had one here in a tank that looked worse than the one I just showed you the picture of, and it ran just fine. Um, the maximum coverage is 18 by 24 inches. Obviously, the, the farther up you have it, the less intense the light's going to be. Um, the closer to the water you are, the, or the, the macroalgae, the more intense the light's going to be. Um, uh, how deep is this rated for? The refugium's 30 inches deep. Well, if you're trying to grow macroalgae 30 inches deep in your refugium, that's, uh, that's a challenge, but uh, you know, more power to you. I have, a, I have probably a, uh, I don't know, mine is, I guess, three feet by four foot uh, area of macroalgae, and it grows about that thick, and that's about as far down as it will, it will grow. Is that your experience, Mark? Yeah, I mean, you, it's funny he was asking about depth because the refugium on my holding tank is, um, it's, I think it's an old 75 gallon tank, which makes it what, like 18 or 20 inches tall. And I get the same kind of, I don't know, a foot-ish of, of, yeah. of the growth of macro. But once I changed out refugium lights and put the grow on there, I got so much more light underneath that algae that I actually found out I had a little Bengay cardinal fish that was <laughs> underneath that algae that Aww. I didn't know about because it was too dark with other Aww, lights. Oh, how cute. So, little cute, little cute guy. Now he gets fed every morning while the grow is on. Oh, that's great. Well, he's down there eating pods anyway. He's having a good old time. No doubt. Yeah, um, somebody asked, is it, is it dimmable? It's a 24 volt uh, light that plugs into the, into the DC 24 port. So it's, it's not dim dimmable, it's off on. Um, frankly, dimmable is not really necessary in a refugium light. You're paying for something that you don't need. Um, if you want a little bit less intensity, move the light up an inch. 
I mean, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Um, let's see here. Paul, put the dimensions out there for you guys. Um, Kevin asked, do I need an Apex for this? Absolutely not. We do have an optional power supply. Uh, Paul will probably help and give the price out there on the power supply. I think it might be $15, I think. Um, if I'm not incorrect, you just plug it into that and you can plug it into uh, you know, any other uh, outlet that you may have uh, or timer, what have you. Um, any other questions, Vincent? Look, somebody said I dropped mine in the water and it still works fine. <laughs> I did the same actually, and it was fine. It, it was an overflow accident, and it was yeah. Fine. And the thing is, is that uh, you know we have tested that. Don't ask how, uh, but it will if you if you do if you were to just dunk it like the water level came up or something like that, and you took it out, it's probably going to be fine. If you left it for say uh, you know 30 minutes in there. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that that's going to be, you know, we're not going to, we're obviously not going to say that it will be, but it's certainly sealed. But salt water is a mean thing. Okay. Yes, it is. Let's see. Any other questions, Vincent? All right. So anyway, that's the Grow, guys. $129.95. It'll be available at retailers soon. You can pre-order at some of the retailers or at your local fish store that will be getting them in. Uh, we will have them overseas in, in a little bit more limited quantities, uh, not too far off in the future as well. Obviously, uh, it, it, it's more, uh, well, that you would have to have a one link over there, the people who have the one link uh, module to run it. Um, Paul corrected me, he said 1995 for the power supply to run it uh, standalone. Well, that's about it for today. We're going to wrap this one up. I really appreciate both you guys coming on here for this announcement. Um, who knows, maybe uh, you. you guys can be part of the, the sky, I keep saying, I get getting mixed up, the sky announcement when it actually, <laughs> uh, when it actually comes out. Um, there are a number of people that, uh, that are already running it uh, and it's, uh, it's having great results already and uh, we're getting kind of antsy and excited here. It won't be too much farther off, I don't think. And, uh, you know, watch uh, Mr. Saltwater Tank, Mark Callahan. Maybe he has a sneak peek one of these times if I don't catch something. I don't know. But he's, he, knows he's not <laughs> he knows he's not supposed to do any reveals. So Philly Reefer, yeah, it's not, it, it's, it's, it's exactly, it's about $150 Philly Reefer if, you, if you're doing it standalone, you're buying the, uh, the power supply. So anyway, guys, thank you again. And until next time, guys, we'll be on uh, Let's Talk Reef next Tuesday, not this coming Tuesday tomorrow, but the one following. You'll see Paul and I, and we can talk more about this. And uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Take care. We'll see thanks. you later.